Passionate Pattern Maker. I am Jennifer Fairbanks, and this is episode two of my podcast. In this episode, I talk to the pattern makers that are featured designers for the spring 2025 lingerie sewing retreat. Uh, hi, I'm Jennifer Fairbanks, and I am the designer of Porcelain and the author of Bare Essentials. I'm Cassie Castile. I'm the designer for Primrose Dawn. And I'm also a gardener, and I do volunteer work with the Texas Master Naturalist. I'm Lily of Lily Pad Designs, and I am also a pattern designer. And um, yeah, <laughs> I am Lisa Sanders. Um, the, I'm a digital garment developer, certified three D trainer, um, technical designer, and pattern designer as well. And I'm a co-owner of Stitch Love Studio. Well, thank you guys all for being here and for being a part of the spring lingerie retreat. I'm really looking forward to it. What are you guys most excited about this retreat? I think I'm most excited about just being around other people who sew lingerie because where I am, I'm the only person I know of who just sews their own clothes in general. All the other sewing people I know are quilters and they're fun to sew with, but they just aren't that excited to hear about me sewing bras. I'm pretty excited about all the exclusive patterns that we're launching for this. <laughs> it's like a little bit more pressure on each of us, but mm -hmm. yeah, we're all doing exclusive patterns for this. I am very excited about pretty much everything. I got really excited to share with you guys and share with the new group of people. Uh, I do love the energy from people that sew with their own hands. Uh, coming from the industry, it's, it's a big difference between doing something with your own hands and finish a project versus working in a task in a corporation. So I love that energy and I really hope, hope, hope that this is just the beginning of a collaboration for more and more sewing retreats in the future and we can get more and more people excited about sewing because sewing is awesome. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. It's um, I, I'm excited to work with just a group of women that, you know, just have the same type of passions that I do. Um, you know, I had a great time teaching with Lily. I think we had a lot of fun um last year and uh we've actually hung out several times in la now <laughs> showed her some of my uh secret places that i shop in la and we may have a project in the works i haven't chatted with her lately so uh that may be some some news coming up but that will uh i'm not gonna share that too much um i do i have actually been working on not just 2025 i've also been working on 2026 um, so you guys might think I'm a little crazy, but like some of these things I'm doing, like I have to get deposits in to make sure that I have spaces. So I'm not really going to fully announce it, but there is some really cool stuff I'm planning for 2026. And I'd love to have you guys involved with it too. Lily kind of knows one of them. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll approach that as we get a little bit closer. Um, but I actually don't want to share that until we are kind of like all into the spring retreat. Um, you know, our fall retreat's already 50% sold out, which is kind of amazing. We sold 50% of the spots like within the first week. Um, we haven't had that momentum for this one, but I think people were just waiting to kind of see what that was going to be like before they signed up for ours. Let's see, I, I printed out some questions, of course, when I printed them out, they're microscopic, even with my glasses. Uh, how about um, what do you hope the attendees will take away from your session? That they'll just feel more confident in being able to sew their own bras and um, just be able to, to apply new techniques to future things that they sew. No, I'm kind of excited about the fact that um, we have such a nice variety of projects for the spring session um you know there's some some you know wired wireless stuff and some like um very comfy lounge wear as well it's kind of exciting and especially with you know people coming out of the pandemic comfort is the name of the game <laughs> tackle to the comfort after Lily because i am going to be doing the uh, the cami with a shell bra and lace and also a short that goes with it. And I'm excited to do a little bit of a different project. It's not gonna be too hard, it's gonna be fun. And then I really hope that people will enjoy the day. Like they take the, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to share the moment and sew together and learn from each other 
and finish a beautiful garment that they're going to be so proud and empowered to sew by themselves for themselves or, or a gift. It could be a gift for somebody else. Yeah. And I started working on, um, I'm doing a robe and I'm like, I never consider what I do to be single purpose. So of <laughs> course I am making it. So it'll be also, you could use it as a dress. So of course you're making things more complicated for myself. So it could be a really cool, <laughs> nice lounging robe, or if you add yes. one accessory, it could be a really nice evening dress. <laughs> nice. I can no wait to see it. Like in my mind, I envision like a silk satin. I'm like, I don't want to put anybody through that. So um, <laughs> I have to think. Double <laughs> I know you guys, everyone's going to be like swearing at me. I'm like, don't worry. There's no silk satin. It, um, <laughs> it will be easier to sew. I will find the perfect fabric for it. Um, <laughs> so Jennifer, <laughs> uh, just so you know, with the proper weight, a silk satin is actually really really easy to sew uh, uh, like the the i have a silk stretch satin that i actually love sewing like that little bit of kind of a lycra it's like five percent or less it gives it just enough heft where it doesn't slip constantly every two seconds because good god that i like swore like a sailor <laughs> <laughs> well knowing me is that i never make think something just straightforward so mm -hmm. it is not just a simple, you know, raglan sleeve or kimono. It's like a kimono type sleeve, but with like asymmetrical seams on one side. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I haven't really started my development yet, so it may completely change. Like I even have like in the initial design is um, a ribbon weaving in the dress, <laughs> in the robe. <laughs> so. The version we do may not have the ribbon weaving in it, but um, I, like I said, I, I always think that the, the most complicated thing I can do, and then I have to, um, you know, tone it down a little bit. <laughs> well, the, the good thing is that you can share a lot of tips on how to sew mm -hmm. this slippery, uh, silky, nice materials. They feel amazing. Once mm -hmm. we're done with the garment, it's going to be wonderful. Do you use a special foot for sewing the silk or I stretch satin sewn... or anything like that? I haven't sewn silk in years. So this is going to be, this is gonna like, okay, where am I going to be like, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to play around with just the different fabrics that I have first and then kind of get a feel for, okay, what is it I actually want to do this in? Um, Cause mm -hmm. I don't want it to be something that people are going to be like, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm scared to death of it. But I also do want to be able to share tips on how to actually mm -hmm. sew it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's definitely, um, there's some challenges for me because it's, it's kind of, even though I know a lot of the stuff I've done is like, you know, the sports bras and the, the wireless bras and the, um, and the actual wired bras, um, it's kind of like a step in a slightly new direction. So it's, um, you know, it's going to be a good challenge for me. And I think it'll be fun for, for everybody who's, who's making it too. Poor okay. Lily. <laughs> I know. So I was, I'm going to share a little story about silk. Um, I was sewing this wedding dress for a friend. And it was a very expensive fabric from New York for my friend. And I had a black Sharpie. Oh. <laughs> Everybody says, oh no, black Sharpie, it's silk. And then I, I, I was sewing and it was 9.30 at night. And then I thought, oh, it's, okay. it's good enough. I'm just going to leave it here until tomorrow. But no, I had to make it perfect. So I'm using the Sharpie the black Sharpie with the ruler to work on the patterns. And then I didn't clean the ruler and then I put it underneath the iron oh. to, to make it, to make the vent in the slit in the back perfectly straight. And then I got that line of black Sharpie. Oh. And then of course it was a zipper. It took me all day to make the, the, the invisible zipper layers, you know, all you name it. So of course I freaked out for a while and then I started searching online how to do this. And then I got another piece of fabric and then I tested it. Like I, I used the Sharpie and then I tested uh, acetone and, you know, everything that I had, dishwasher detergent, like anything that I could find. And then um, I finally got um, 
I read online that you can use alcohol to remove Sharpie. And then, of course, that was the only thing I didn't have. I had everything in the cabinet, in the medicine cabinet, except for alcohol. So my neighbor actually helped me. And then I got a cotton and then I started working on it and it actually removed it. So if you ever run into the situation where you need to remove black Sharpie from a silk fabric, there you go, alcohol. <laughs> Very good tip. Yeah. Uh, so Lily, I know you're sick right now, but what have you been up to? I know you did the um, frock tails. How did that go? I haven't heard anything about that. <sighs> the frock tails, wow, that was a blur. Um, <laughs> Cocktails was pretty, uh, that was pretty amazing. Um, just you know, like being surrounded by other sewists who are not necessarily, um, you know, into lingerie, but just enjoy sewing and kind of hanging out with other people. Um, and it was, it's my first year kind of doing fractals in LA. And so I kept it really, really small. Um, but it was it was nice. It was it was uh, kind of homey. We had it at uh, the library bar, and because we were at a library a bar, we the theme obviously was you know stories or classics and whatnot. So we had people dress up from you know um, mm -hmm. Cinderella's like evil stepsisters <laughs> to um, I dressed up as something from Moby Dick, like I was a kraken. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, I'm the host. I gotta show up, you know. So <laughs> you have photos. Yeah, I do have some photos on the um, Instagram for frocktails and all that. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, people are pretty excited. They're like, okay, let me know for next year. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll let you know when I start it. <laughs> do you have a little wine? A little bit of wine while you were enjoying your time. <laughs> You know, I, I should have pre-partied. Um, there, there was definitely plenty of alcohol to go around because it is frock tails, um, mm -hmm. but I did not uh, get there in time. <laughs> but it's, it's fine. Um, it, was, it, it was nice. Um, I actually have a, I hired an old friend who used to DJ for us when we had house parties. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, um, <laughs> Pull out some old friends and uh, see making new ones. Well, one of the things I was actually thinking would be really great to have kind of more an open and more of a long term conversation with is to kind of start educating everyone else on what it takes to actually release a pattern. Um, and I know everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I actually recently um, I took a working vacation to North Carolina. So I was not near you. I was just north of uh, Atlanta. Um, okay. I was gonna... So I, you're on the other, you're on the coast, right? I am uh, um, close to Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. So I was just north of Atlanta, um, right over the border in Franklin. And I did a working holiday to kind of go through and look kind of like at my financials. And I was like, I think I would like to sit down and figure out what it costs to produce a pattern, what my development costs are, because, oh, I know what I pay other people to help me, but I've never really factored in my own time if I were to hire myself to do it. And I was like, after I wrote it all down, I looked at it, I was like, should I be making patterns at all? I know you guys have all had that reaction before. You're like, okay, it is a lot of work. And for me, it takes me four years to break even on a pattern, at least from what I've found so far, unless I do a course, then a course I'm able to kind of break even a little bit faster. But it was definitely was eye opening for me. And I'm sure that you guys have some similar experience or maybe you've not costed your time out. I don't know. Um, the one that costed. <laughs> I know because our time is not free. We yeah. are worth something. So, you know, um, you know, figuring out what our time is. And so I just think it would be interesting for people to kind of understand like our whole process and, you know, kind of if you were to break it down, you know, what would your most recent pattern cost you to develop it? If you were to hire somebody to completely do it from start to finish, what would you have paid somebody to do it, including testing, including samples? And you're like, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? And since you brought that up, I, I thought, you know what? The next time I 
do a pattern. I, I want to just keep a log of all the hours that I put into it because I really don't know. I'm not doing this for eight hours a day. It's usually more like three to four hours a day. And um, so, yeah, I think keeping, keeping a log sheet would be really eye-opening to see just how long it takes. I, I designed one underwire bra pattern, and that might be the only one that I ever do because I didn't realize that the wire gray changes once you get it up into the larger wire sizes. And it was making me crazy. It took me six months to develop that pattern. And I was just ready to throw it into a corner and stop because I thought I, I'm only like halfway through with the work. <laughs> I, but I, I was determined to just keep going. And when I finally published it, I'm like, never again. Maybe yeah. in 10 years, I'll design another underwire pattern, <laughs> but not anytime soon. There's a reason why a lot of designers create a lot of underwear patterns, because yeah. there's usually like two to three pattern pieces and that's it. I feel like I need to do more of those and not do the complicated, like, you know, 16 panel bra <laughs> like I did. <laughs> Lily knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Or a strapless bra that has like, of like 5 billion components. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess the most complicated, your most complicated pattern you've ever done, Cassie, yours was that underwired bra. Yeah. Uh, Leisha, how about yours? What was your most complicated pattern that you created that halfway through you were like, I don't know. <laughs> I started the process of a underwire lace bra and I wanted to combine sizes. I said, well, if I do a low stretch, I can probably get away with combining at least two sizes, uh, cup sizes. Uh, but I get really stuck in the process. So I haven't even, I'm not even close to finish it. I'm not even close to halfway. <laughs> I mean, so um, I've been working on it for a while, uh, but I, I do like complicated things. Like I, I think that some of the complicated things that I've done in the past are like corsets with underwires and cups and um, you name it. I didn't develop that for all the sizes. I developed that for a client. So that takes away a lot of the additional work when it comes to the grading part. Uh, but in the industry, it takes a year to develop a pattern and it's a group of people with factories involved with experts in this and experts in that and and it still takes them a year to develop at least so that is something that i know we tend to be overachievers we pattern makers i don't know i think that this might be a true statement <laughs> for what i hear um but and it's exciting and and i think that's the thing that keeps us going because we love doing pattern making and see what's gonna work how it's gonna work and all that actually it's another fun um fun story because i cut the 20 million pieces you know the lace the the the, the outer layer the inner layer the mesh inside the all of this and then, and then i put it on the table and then i spread it out and then i looked at it and i was like ah now what? And then I just went to bed, <laughs> went to sleep. And I had this dream about connecting the pieces. Can you believe that? About connecting the pieces. And the next day I was able to actually stitch because you know how you want to have a certain order. So the seams are inside and step this step before this step and this step before the step. And I was very happy the next day. So sometimes it's pretty good to just leave it and come back the next day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And Lily, you want to say something about her timeline, right? The year? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I read something recently, and it was another pattern designer. And I think it was, they don't do lingerie. It's just, it was, I think, just, you know, regular clothing. And they said something to the effect of, you know, I design patterns for the industry, right? So basically what Lisha does, right? And then they designed a pattern for uh, the end consumer, you know, PDF pattern. And they're like, this took longer. It took longer and it was more work, even though there was no construction. Like you didn't have to sew anything and yes. you didn't have to deal with, um, you know, sending stuff to the vendors and the manufacturers, but it literally took longer. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Absolutely. And then you have to add the sewing instructions. Right. And the testing. Yeah. And is this going to be doable in a home machine? Is this going to be understandable for people to 
saw it this way or that way. And I personally get a lot of different people, even people who are not sewists, to read the sewing instructions just because I'm so used to it that I might complete it in my head, but it doesn't make sense for somebody else. So I had to check with different level levels of skill at people, like people with different levels of skill to be able to make sure that those song instructions are going to be doable for the majority of people. So that's another added. Oh yeah. This, the word. sewing instructions take me just as long to create yes. than the entire mm -hmm. process of grading it. And even this last time I hired two different people to do my graphic design, do all my illustrations. And, you know, after looking at it, I'm like, maybe next pattern, I go back to just taking photos. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to like cheap out on it, but like with the sheer amount of time and effort, like if there's changes then you know, then that's another hour that goes into the time that we're already paying living wages to somebody. And it's like, okay, so it takes 25 hours for them to do this or 40 hours for them to do this. I'm like, but then I don't get paid. I don't get paid for like three years <laughs> if I hire them to do this. Um, and then actually it even, um, I recently had somebody send me a message and I'm sure someone's going to watch this and be like, oh, that was me, um, to point out that there was a typo. And I'm like, my pattern's out. I am not changing that because that involves me going into the InDesign file, changing that, exporting it again, uploading it to the zip, zip files, putting it up on Etsy, putting it up on my website. I'm like, for a, a typo of A instead of an or whatever it happened to be. I think I used um, millimeters instead of centimeters. I'm like, I think someone can figure out if it was supposed to be 15 millimeters or 15 centimeters. So I apologize to whoever that is. I'm not pointing, pulling this out, but I'm probably not changing it. I hear you on those instructions. I'm at the point where it takes me as long to develop the instructions, um, if not longer. You know, if it's like a, a new pattern, when I launched the clothing pattern, yeah, that's a great idea. That thing took longer than the pattern itself. That Ooh. pattern was done and like six months later, still working on the instructions. Still, <laughs> it's just, yeah. Yeah, I really I agonize think... over the directions because I always know what I mean, right? But that doesn't mean that somebody else is going to know. And I, I have this worldwide group of testers. And so some some people, it's they're following a pattern and English is not their first language. So I, I try to make it really clear and concise. And I don't think anybody else knows all the pacing that I do going around my house thinking like, should I write it this way? Should I write it this way? You know, and how do I illustrate this? And so now I try to think ahead when I'm sewing my initial samples, I think, okay, how am I gonna describe this? And I will just type a really quick list of instructions so once I finish the first sample, then I follow, you know, those written instructions for the next one to make sure I didn't forget anything. And I just have to slowly develop so I don't, you know, end up in front of my computer trying to type thinking, OK, did I do this part next or did I do the other part? You know, well, I've got a pointer for that. So every time I do a sample, whether it's the first sample or the last sample, I photograph every single step at my sewing machine mm -hmm. because I give that to my graphic designer or I'm like, oh, OK, if I want to try and tackle it. And it's always changing, but it helps me work through, say, oh, what did I do that didn't work? Um, and so it's really helpful to see that because then you've got a picture. Um, and then I just kind of do a rough, like, okay, I did right sides together, blah, 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 this is this. And then I throw it into chat GPT. I have my own, I created my own chat. You oh, know, wow. you can do that. You can create your own chat GPT, like your custom one for your brand. Um, so you can train it to understand your business. And so you can actually say, okay, in my words, can you rewrite this? And like, I will just put my rough language in there. I'm like, it has been a lifesaver. It doesn't, it doesn't cut down all the time, but it cuts off a good five hours of probably the pattern development for the instructions. So pointer, I suggest trying it. Yeah, I didn't know you That's could do interesting. that. Interesting. I didn't know yeah. you could do that. Oh. 
I've, uh, I've, I've definitely found that some of the AI tools definitely help. Uh, my assistant, when she started, I was like, let's try this. Let's try this. You always have to double check it because it makes stuff up. And there's been times where she posted stuff in social media. I'm like, that's not true. Like, that's totally wrong. And I'm running in there to try and edit. Like, where did it get posted? It's on Facebook. It's on Instagram. I got to go edit it back because it, it just made stuff up. But but it's definitely useful. I suggest using it in your everyday life. <laughs> yes, I definitely, when I use ChatGPT, I definitely check and I take it as a starting point and mm -hmm. then I modify every, you know, accordingly. Uh, I'm just, and especially because I, I did try some instructions and I, it wasn't correct. So yeah, you really, you have to prompt so, it. Like I'm like, wah, well, wah. that's not true. <laughs> You know, I respond to okay. it. I'm like, well, you just made that shit up. I'm like, what did you yes. just say? Like, how do you sew it inside out or whatever? I'm like, no, that's not how you do it. Like, it's like I'm trying to, like, tell a person, like, you're being stupid. and Don't do it that way. <laughs> Doesn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm like, I, um, I knew that um just kind of what i hear and kind of what i see on some of the boards and i'm sure you guys have seen it as well just being on social media um someone's like oh this pattern's great and oh but this one's absolutely terrible have you seen the instructions have you and i'm like they don't really understand what what goes into making a pattern you know the underwire patterns i love doing because it's fun it's challenging um, lily i'm sure you are kind of the same way like it's fun using the software to like check this, check the seam lengths. Is it correct? Um, that's the part I love. Like, okay, how can I make this work? Um, so that's the fun part that I enjoy. Um, but I, I don't know, like, Wait, which, which software are you Jennifer, referring to? Sorry. Huh? No, oh, I'm which, thinking, okay, go ahead. Oh, I was like, um, we use, I use poly pattern and I actually introduced Lily to it. So Lily also uses poly pattern. And Lisha introduced me to 3D, so now we're all using it. I, so I use Poly Powder and I use Browseware, um, and of course Adobe Illustrator. And <laughs> yeah, no, I, I couldn't get into the um, Browseware. I have it on my computer. We actually upgraded my computer because it couldn't the memory or the memory card and visual card wasn't strong enough for it. So we had to upgrade my computer so I could even just try it out. I just don't have time to deal with it. So it's still sitting there and, you know, probably less than three. <laughs> it takes a while. Yeah. It, the learning curve is not the as learning curve. as yeah. we might. And yeah. uh, coming from a trainer with Browseware uh, for many years and training technical designers and pattern makers and designers, um, it's you really it's a really new concept for your head there is nothing that we can compare it with so that could be a good thing because you could learn things in a way that you are kind of getting good habits from the beginning however there is also the problem or the thing that um it's not like Illustrator. It's not like Excel. It's not anything that we can compare it to. But once you get the hang of it, it's wonderful. It saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of cutting garments and, and putting them together and having to change it just because you need to make a small change or move a seam. Uh, those changes I do in 3D and then I print it out again. I don't do my patterns completely in 3D. I actually still drape and work on flat patterns, um, and, but I do a combination. Either I start from the pattern and then I transfer to 3D, or I, I have tried the other way too, where I start 3D and then I transform it and then I, I actually print it out and then I saw it. Uh, but it does take a while to learn. It's no, don't feel bad because it does take a long time. And, it's not like you're not busy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Between planning the retreat, running porcelain, um, my new um, sewing studio. Yeah, it's um, three full-time jobs. Um, so Cass Cassie, what do you use? Do you use Illustrator? Yeah, or are I use using Illustrator. 
Um, I've been using Illustrator for over 20 years, so I'm the most comfortable in that. And working on the computer just is not very intuitive for me. So having to learn new software is just intimidating. So maybe someday I'll make the jump. But for now, uh, I'm just working in Illustrator. Well, when you're here, um, Lily or I will introduce you to Poly Pattern because uh. it is... It, it honestly changed my life. Like I used to tr play around with Illustrator, but you can't, if you need to change like an eighth of an inch somewhere, it's almost virtually impossible to do once you've graded a pattern in Illustrator. Yeah. Um, because one of the first things I do in the software is I get my base pattern fitting and I grade that. I grade that almost immediately. So as soon as I start making changes, I don't have to regrade it. Like every, all the grade is completely taken through all the design changes. Oh, wow. And, that's the biggest the biggest difference. Like I know there's definitely advantages of, advantages of it, but it would honestly probably speed up your process too. It, yeah. <laughs> can you yeah. can you export the pattern when you're done to be able to use it in Illustrator? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we um, export now. They actually so I am the U.S. rep for it, so um, I have a direct line to the creators of it. They've been really receptive. Um, this last version, um, it's version 10, correct, Lily? That's what we have. Um, they have, an, well, actually, they did it in version 9, where they have um, an export to an SVG. And the SVG originally was really, really choppy. And then I showed them kind of like, because I'm working with small pattern pieces, they were too choppy. So they went and refined it for me, just like over the course of a couple of days, we started troubleshooting and figured out that, you know, how to make it better for bra patterns. Um, and they've been pretty awesome about it, but you can export that um, as an SVG. It can also go into other software. It goes straight into browseware because they have a, they have a plugin. I don't think you use the plugin, do you, Lily? You just do the no, straight. I export, I export to 3D AMA, mm -hmm. um, and then I will put that into Browseware. Yeah, they but, have a yeah. direct. Yeah, they have a direct um, plugin for Browseware for Poly Pattern, mm -hmm. but um, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> so I gave up. I was like, I, I'll try it and I walk away. I can absolutely help. I can. Yeah. Help, and I would love to see that software. I'm uh, always open to learning new software. Yeah, maybe I need to have you guys here for like several extra days so we can just all hang out. <laughs> yes, just tell me the date. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the dates of the retreat. We just need to have well, a new couple dates. extra days. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and maybe we can reform Cassie. <laughs> yeah. So, but with Cassie, seriously, consider it. You yeah. saved much time. Yeah. And you get to be more complicated. You can do complicated things that you were like, oh, I'm not going to do this because I don't. <laughs> but it's fun to do complicated. It makes simple all the time, easy. Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer and Lily. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, um, you know, us, us four, I, I don't know, it feels like a bit of uh, some peas in a pod because it's like. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Complex, complex. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, we kind of like, you know, doing things a hard way. Yep. Yeah, that's the only one. <laughs> if it were easy, would it be fun? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I want to believe. Well, if it were easy, as in like we made an easy pattern is that fun or do we like the challenges oh. of challenging ourselves to make something complicated food for thought i guess so. i think that there is a time to maybe take a step back and make something simple just to get it done and then finish a project mm -hmm. when i created the daisy pattern that's a very simple pattern it's a bralette and then i had a lot of a lot of um, I was very excited to do it, but there was a store in Atlanta. I lived in, I used to live in Atlanta, um, Top Stitch, um, Top Stitch ATL. I don't know if you guys heard about her. She's amazing. Um, so I was going to teach the bra pattern and I was going to do the kits for the pattern. And then it did help me that she, that we got to an agreement to a date because that way I was able to finish my project. I swear I would still working on the project if it wasn't because I had a deadline to teach this class. 
Um, but I think that it, otherwise I would start it simple and then I start like you starting to think, oh, maybe if I do this, oh, maybe if I do that, maybe if I do this other thing. And then, and then I, I'm thinking we have to also, like even thinking about simplifying it for people, it's complicated. Do, do you feel that way sometimes? Like, okay, yeah. how can I make it simpler for them? But then we do all this extra work to be able to make it understandable. Yeah, no, I'm, I mean, that's one of the reasons I did my loungewear pieces. I did that Emily tank, which is just a simple darted tank. But of course, I needed to have it from extra small to 3X in eight different cup sizes. Um, you know, so I still made it complicated, but on a simple side, um, you know, doing my little legging patterns. Um, so I like mm -hmm. to do my simple things because that's where I figure out my grade. If I can mm -hmm. do this, and, and even like when I did the Eve, you know, the original when I did the Eve classic, um, I've since changed it from the original one, but it taught me a lot about the grading process by starting something simple. And then I was like, okay, I've mastered this simple thing, or at least in my mind, simple. And Lily's like, that's not a simple pattern. You have like 2000 variations of it. Um, <laughs> you know, but I'm like, to me, that is a simple pattern. Then I can go to the infinity one that has seams that look like a darn infinity symbol. Um, you know, and I like if I can master the simple, then I can go to challenge my brain and do something that's more complex. And that's like if I didn't have, you know, so having the, the easy thing is good. But I also think like I need that challenge of that complicated piece. Otherwise, I'm like, you know, I, I feel like I'm missing something in life. <laughs> you get bored. Yes. <laughs> Interesting, uh, interesting process. I, I, I think that it's very common for pattern makers to, to think that way. And I think that because you use so much logic and the analytical skills and the, and the, and the, a lot of common sense too. Like you, you engage a lot of parts of your uh, brain and a lot of parts of your, um, like in your process, you you have to think so many different aspects when it comes to making a pattern. And then I think it's funny when people said, oh, that's a simple pattern, anybody can sew or, and then of course it's done. It's, mm -hmm. it looks simple, but that's, that's our job too, to make it look like it's doable. So, but behind that, how many years of experience do you have? How many years did it take you to get to the point where you can make a pattern? So the fact that we enjoy it, and I, I wanted to ask you about the how you calculated your time when you make the pattern, because I've never done that either. <laughs> I've never calculated the time that it takes for me to do something. And if you add that to the years prior to get to this point, and we're not even counting that, obviously, but I would like to, I've never did the costing the costing for okay it took me this many hours or how much would it be if i hire a pattern maker which pattern makers are expensive the pattern making part is very very expensive i mean then i'm glad we enjoy it <laughs> yeah no i um i basically looked at some of the last client work i did knowing how long it took me for just the pattern development and the grading not doing any of the testing um and knowing how much testing it was. And I kind of use that as my, um, as my gauge saying, okay, yeah, it maybe took me um, 20 hours to work on this particular pattern for a client. So I know if I were to do something similar to that, I would have a similar amount of hours. Um, and so that's, I, I didn't actually do an actual recording of like how many times, I just remember how long it took. Um, I remembered, you know, the amount of samples I did and a lot of it I had fun with. So, you know, it's, you know, all the extra samples. I'm like, I needed clothes. My clothes were falling apart. So it's like I made it to supplement my wardrobe. And so I never really factored that cost in. But I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, if I were to sit down and say, how long did it take me to create that? I'm like, so the pattern itself was easy, but how long did it take me to master that grade? Grading darts, I hate it. 
Mm. Which if you, if you have a trick to grading darts, I am going to pick your brain because I hate grading darts with the passion. <laughs> like, I've taken more time grading darts than I have grading bras. Um, it's, um, I just kind of come up with an estimate and I price my time as though I were the pattern maker I'd be hiring. And I think that's the mm -hmm. best way to really figure out what the cost of your pattern is. Because if we didn't mm -hmm. have ourselves and we wanted to create a pattern type company, um, I would need to hire one of you to do the work. And so if I were to hire Lily to, to develop my Aphrodite pattern that I just released, what would she have charged me to do that? even if she was just doing the pattern and not the samples. Um, and so just kind of like putting yourself in the third party, like, you know, if I were to be hired by me, what, how many hours would it take? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, you need to, to log off when you go have lunch. You know, it, when you're reading emails, you shouldn't be on the clock. You know, that's not part of that time you should be doing because I know we, we start a project, at least me, I do, I start something and I'm like, I'm tired of working. I'm going to go look at Facebook. I'm going to see who's, what's commenting on the bra makers group. See if there's anything I can comment on. And 30 minutes later, I was like, oh, I forgot to log off, you know? <laughs> so it's like, we all need our breaks, but like, you know, I think, you know, put the value of what you would hire somebody to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know I'm trying to come to terms with what my value actually is. And it's taken me forever. And it honestly, I think it took until last year when we were planning this retreat. And honestly, working with Maddie, seeing what Maddie has for her value, it's like, oh, I need to be valuing myself more than what I was valuing myself before. And, you know, we've all been in situations where we're like, okay, I'll pay you $200 to do a video. And you're like, oh, great, $200. And then when you look at it, it's like, that thing took me eight hours to do. So you're paying me $25 an hour. I'm like, I'm skilled labor. Um, you know, just as a, as an example. And I'm like, that's what I pay my assistant. You know, I'm like, my assistant does my social media. Like she's not an experienced sewist. She doesn't know how to sew. She can't do pattern making. Um, and so, you know, making sure that we have our value on the table and that we're not going to let somebody step on it. I think is just so important. And, you know, just bringing that conversation of what it costs to make a pattern, like, oh yes, the pattern sold thousands of pieces. I was like, yeah, but it cost $10,000 to create, you know, something like that. I'm like, I broke even on it. Like I'm not raking in the dough. I, I'm not like buying a yacht in a million dollar home. But, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that like, I feel like there's just not been enough conversation about and the more and more I see some of the conversations happening out in, you know, in, in the world. And I'm like, we all make judgments and assumptions about what other people do. And I think it's time to share what it is we do. Like, you know, how long does it take to create a pattern? Um, you know, it may take me six months to go from initial development to finish. So it's like, yes, we've got a retreat in the spring. I'm stressed out because I haven't actually started drafting mine for the spring yet. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, and it may end up being a slight revamp of something we've done before, but I'm doing something completely different. So it's like, I have on my goal that I have to be testing this pattern in November. Like I need to be almost done testing this pattern in November. So that gives me like two months to work on it. Um, you know, so kind of like working backwards with those deadlines and, um, you know, as I'm getting older, like, you know, I'm now 48. So it's like, now I'm getting older. I cannot do the same type of multitasking. I don't have a, an accurate assessment of my time of like how long it takes something to do. So I'm like, oh, it'll take me, I can easily finish that in about two weeks. And in reality, it's two months um, just because I've overestimated what I've committed myself to. And I feel terrible about that. I'm sure I'm not the only one. You know, I was interviewed on a, a podcast and she asked, you know, when's your next pattern going to be out? And I said, I, I don't know. I'm working on it. Spring. Like, but when are you planning on publishing? And I said, when it's done. <laughs> yeah. No. And I, I said, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a one woman show. And I really, I really can't say, cause I never really know what life is going to throw at me. And if, you know, something comes up, there's nobody else behind the scenes working on it. It's all just me. So. 
you know, and I'm, I'm like, you know, I think, oh yeah, two weeks, it'll be fine. I'll be, I'll be done. And then now like a month, two months later, oh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Yeah. Like, oh wait, something came up. I have to now do this. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. And especially if you're managing a small business, it's not just sitting and doing a pattern and that's it. It's okay. Now is the website. Now is the QuickBooks. Now is the thing. Now is the other thing. So it, it's a lot of extra stuff that we, extra stuff that we have to do, and the pattern itself takes a long time to develop because there is also the responsibility of having a decent pattern out there. Like you don't want your name associated with something that is halfway done. So it's and then the pattern making process, what maybe people don't realize is that there are so many different aspects to it. You have to make the pattern, you have to make the sample to test that pattern. You have to make it again and again, 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 again. And then, <laughs> and then you have to get the fitting, right? Um, making sure that certain sizes are gonna be fitting correctly. And that, all of that process, and then, the grading itself is a totally different. I, I have a, cont, a person that I work with and she that's all she does. She does grading. That's all she does. That's the level of expertise she has. But then we are talking here about making the pattern, grading it, making sure it fits. Like That's like three, four different expertise areas that you have to manage here. Um, so it's, it's an interesting, uh, process. And then the part that I, and then I'm like you, Jennifer, I have a hard time valuing my time in my, my process too. When I started making digital garments and things like that, uh, I had this conversation with a friend from New York. Thankfully she's a New Yorker and then, you know, <laughs> they know they're, you know, they, they have the attitude most of the time. And then I said, well, I feel so bad. Do you think I can charge this for this? It's not going to take me that long. And then she said, how long did it take you to learn technical design, pattern making, digital, uh, you know, the software, the how to do it. And like, how long did it take you? Over 20 years is if you count all of this time. And and I started sewing when I was a kid, plus pattern making classes, plus the technical. So it's been a whole, basically my whole life. If I count the, the moment that I started sewing, I'm counting 30 years. So we are not charging for the, it took me an hour, two hours, six hours, 10 hours. It took me that plus all of these years of ex time and effort and error and, and trial and error to get to this point. Um, so, because it's not like you're going to get a book, you're going to make a pattern and, oh, it's perfect. I wish <laughs> it was like that. And I think that people might think that. People might think that, oh, you just sketch the pattern and then it's done. But no, <laughs> now you have to do the fitting. Now you have to do all of these other, other things. Yeah. And then you have to add the sewing instructions. <laughs> yeah it's an afterthought but it's not really it's you know that's what everyone's going to judge you on you could have the most amazing yes. pattern in the world but if your instructions are kind of crap no one's they're going to talk shit about it and you know <laughs> yeah the essentially pattern makers were on the same not same but a similar uh I guess, experience and charge level as a mechanic. You know, a mechanic can spend 30 minutes to change one tiny part in the car, but it took them 20 years of experience to figure out exactly what it was um, in 30 minutes, right? Because if you didn't have experience, you could be working on it for days because you don't know what you're doing. So it's kind of the same thing. Or an artist that's able to kind of sketch out a great... Um, landscape or something in five minutes because they've been doing it for 20, 30 years to be able to do that accurately, quickly, and beautifully in five minutes. And so it's the time, uh, I guess, that we spent to develop our skills in addition to the actual time for the pattern development itself. 
pay. I do Jennifer have a question. Tell us about your studio. Tell us about your new studio. Um, so it is called So Pinellas. Um, I opened it in December. We we moved in November, and we were moving. We needed to move into a space that was different than where we were at because there was a boat builder in the area and they were doing epoxy. And so I have major asthma and it was wafting into the space, you know, just because there's no seals on it. And so it became really, really like, I didn't feel safe having my employees there, um, let alone me being there. I would get migraines every time I go there. So I had to start looking for another place. Everything that I found even remotely close was at least twice the price. And I'm like, okay, so if I have to go twice the price, can I go bigger? And because of that, we went from a 1200 square feet to 2,500 square feet. So I went twice the size and a little bit more than twice the price. And I was like, okay, so this is a big cost increase that I was not expecting. I need to be able to offset that. So maybe I teach one class a month that might help cover the cost on that. I don't care if I make money. I just want to make sure that I cover the rent so I don't end up with this huge rent bill that I can't pay, you know, because, you know, paying $3,000 a month on rent that is not your mortgage is a lot of money. And um, we were really lucky. We got some amazing press, like as soon as we opened and we I, I like to tell my students this when I'm actually, cause I actually now don't really teach there any much anymore. I have teachers that teach for me. So yes, again, <laughs> kind of trying to pass it on a little bit. Um, but within the first two months that we were open. So by the time of the end of February, I had more students come through the door of that studio than I did in the four years that I had my studio, my store in Redlands. And I'm like in two months, like it is, I was never expecting that. Like we had, I had to immediately hire two additional teachers. Um, and, and then I was still teaching like several days a week. And I'm like, I, this is too much. Like I wasn't expecting a successful business. I needed one class a month to pay the rent. <laughs> so that has kind of taken it's on wonderful. a life of its own. And well, part of the reason to part of the rationing for moving into the bigger space was that, oh, we can host um, the lingerie retreat there. I was like, we don't have to pay because all the places we were looking at was like one a thousand to two thousand dollars a day for renting. And I'm like, we would have to have a lot more people in there. And I'm like, can we do this on a budget? And so that's kind of really was the deciding factor of moving there. Thank you for listening. If you want to hear more about these wonderful designers, tune in for my next podcast. I chat with Cassie Castillo of Primrose Dawn and discuss what makes her awesome.